Psalm 77 <clears throat> to the chief physician to deduce him. You find him back in Psalm 39. A Psalm of Asaph. There he is. Who is this guy, Asaph? Because he's a prophet. Because again, we're going to look at the tribulation period. We looked at a couple chapters ago, and they say, you know, chapter 74, maybe he was an Asaph during the time of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. So, here's something to juice them. So let's look at 1 Chronicles 9. 1 Chronicles 9. Try to get an idea who this guy is, scripture with scripture. I mean, if the scripture tells us who this guy is, then who cares what the brilliant minds think? First Chronicles 9, 16. And Obadiah, the son of Shemini, the son of Gala, the son of Jeduthun, and Verkriah, Ber the son of Asaph, the son of Elkiah, the, that dwelt in the village of Nephthah. Verse 14, and of the Levites. Verse 1. So all Israel were reckoned to genealogy. Behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, who were carried away to Babylon for their transgressions. Oh. But there's no ace out there. But well, here's a list of people going to Babylon captivity. Jeduthun. But we're not done. 1638. First Chronicles 1638. And we're trying to find out who this Asaph is. Of the, and Asaph shows up 12 times, 12 chapters in Psalms. And we're looking at Jeduthun. Because he shows up in today's psalm. And 1 Chronicles 16, 38. Obadim with their brethren, three score and eight. Obadim, the sons of Jeduthun, Hasa to be porters. Okay, well, that's not really the one we want, but 42. And then there was He-Man, Jeduthun with trumpets and cymbals. So there are two Jeduthuns. For that should make sound with musical I mean, instrument, musical instruments of God. And the sons of Jerusalem were porters. That's what we just read. Verse 1. So they saw, so they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David. Here's a Jerusalem and there is David. As they're bringing the ark in. First Chronicles 25. First Chronicles 25. And we're trying to find out who Ace, which one Ace of is. Verse 1. I mean, I've been saying Ace of is the one that David knows. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated the service of the sons of Asaph. Uh oh, there he is. And he, man. And Jeduthun. Oh, well, by apples, there they are. And the sons of Asaph, Zachar, Joseph, Nethelheim, Asariah, the sons of Asaph, under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied. Bingo! Take the authority minds of, of doctors and philosophers and throw them out. There he is. And what's he do? He is the chief. Of the instruments and the music under David. And what else does he do? He prophesies. So when I read the other day, people said, well, it could be an ace of that, you know, was, you know, after or during the captivity or after the captivity, like Jeremiah and Ezekiel. They did not read First Chronicles 25, verse 1 and 2. So let's go back over to Psalms. You gotta use the Bible to check the minds of Bible experts. 
Sanctify through, through thy through truth, thy word is true. Just because a man says it doesn't mean it's so. I don't care what college you went. Listen, I know plenty of people who go into these, these Bibles, sinonary, sinonary, S I N, sinonary, and Bible college, and they come out just as stupid. And many come out of these sinonary, leaving the King James Bible for the modern word. That's garbage. I've heard some stories. I've listened to men who go into these sinonary and say, oh man, really? And did they teach you uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs? No. Did they teach you Babylon, Mystery Babylon? No. Did they teach you the two Babylon? No. Then you don't know history. That's why you bring Easter and Christmas into your church. You don't know. But Psalm 77, to the chief musician, to Jeduthun, a Psalm of Asaph, and we saw they lived together. I don't mean they lived together. The same time of David. And Asaph was a prophet. I cried unto God with my voice. Even unto God with my voice. Barely, barely. You know, Asaph seems to do that. He seems to repeat. Of importance. When Jesus wanted to get your attention. Barely, barely. What's to get our attention? Happy birthday to Jesus. Happy birthday to Jesus. No, that's only once in the Bible. But the death, burial, and resurrection is all for God. And the book of Acts. And Romans. And throughout the writings of Paul. And in Hebrews. What's important? The death, burial, and resurrection or the birthday? It sure is not the birthday. There are more accounts in the Bible of the tabernacle being explained to us the materials and it being built. Than the birthday of Jesus. And when God repeats something, pay attention. It's an exclamation point. And he gave ear unto me. God listened to me. We have a God that is not a statue. Where Psalms will come up and say they have ears and they can't hear not. That's not our God. Our God hears us. Well, he's not answering my prayer. Well, he may be saying no. Or he may be saying not now. Or yes. I realize our God's a patient God. I'm learning that out. In the day of my trouble. That seems to be a, a key word in this trouble. That was a key word of David. Trouble as in what, what trouble does the Bible speak about? Jacob's trouble. What we call the, the tribulation period. The great tribulation. In the day of my trouble. I sought the Lord. That's what we ought to do when we get in trouble. Too many people, they run to the past. Too many people, they run to the bank. Too many people, they go sign a contract. Too many people go to the bar. Too many people go to the wrong people. Too many people go to a shrink. Too many people go to a doctor. He said, I'm in trouble. I went to the Lord. Now, you need a doctor, let the Lord tell you. Jesus said, you know, hey, a physician for those that are sick. But before you, you go running off, say, God. Do I need to see a doctor? Is it really that bad? I sought the Lord. Just like he said, I, I cried in the Lord. I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night. The night is supposed to be rest, restful. You know, you lay down, you go to sleep, you have dreams. And you take a moment of... Uh, Get out of reality by sleeping. Now I am. And if it's a tribulation period, it's a period of darkness. It's a period of the satanic rule of the satanic trinity. The antichrist. The false prophet. And uh, the false beast. And cease not. It doesn't stop. My soul refused to be comforted. And in the antichrist... The comfort. I can't get comfort. Why can't you get comfort in the tribulation period? The Holy Spirit's gone. He went out with the church. The comforter. The comforter has gone. It's the song for the tribulation period. The comforter has come. For us in the church age, but in the tribulation period, the comforter is gone. The comforter is gone. 
And Satan doesn't give you no comfort. Satan doesn't give you no mercy or grace. He doesn't know how. Don't look for Satan to be loved. He has no love. God is love. I remembered God. You ought to remember God. Because we forget God. Today when we did the biblical hymns that are true. We sin because we forget about God. We don't we don't have God active in our lives, and that's when we sin. And was troubled. I complained. He complained to God in prayer. Is that right? You better believe it's right. Now you don't go complain to people at church, you don't go complain to your co-workers. That's wrong. But I've always been, I've always taught since, since I've gone into ministries and prison ministries and street ministries. I believe when you're alone with God, you tell him exactly how you feel because you're not hiding anything. He knows it. And if you're angry with God, you tell God you're angry. You, you, you don't understand. You say, God, I don't understand. And people say, you know, you can't ask God why. I do. Say, God, why am I going through this? And not challenging God but what am I to learn because there's been things in my life I didn't learn the lesson I had to go back and do it again sometimes a couple times and then it's like okay Lord hold on I'm stupid you know the first time okay that's but the second time and now I'm up to the third time I I'm being stupid here Lord what am I missing? What What are you trying to knock into my thin head and get into my heart? Ask God why. If it's to help you and to prove your relationship with God, ask him. Say, Lord, no, I'm not challenging God. What gives you the right God to do that? No, he gives all right. But to do right before God and he's doing something in your life, say, Lord, why? And he just might show you. And you might get the victory. So he complained. I, I complained to God all the time. To God. I said I complained to God all the time. No, I mean, not all the time. But I do. No one knows it. No one hears it. I complain to God when I'm at the farmer's market. And that DJ is playing. Say, Lord God, really, can't you? Your word's not being heard, Lord God. Can't you just turn that thing off can't you blow up that musical system can't you give us a power failure here come on lord why my ear i got an ear infection i've had it since december 31st you better believe god why can't i hear i can hear now thank you lord god there's no pain but why am i hearing background noise why am i not getting hearing and i'm saying why i'm complaining to the lord because Maybe it's something I'm doing. Maybe it's something not doing. Complain to the Lord. They're going to complain. And my spirit was overwhelmed. It's too much for me. And that's what the tribulation period is going to be. It's going to be too much. And Jesus said, you know, accept the time to be, you know, shortened. Even the very elect wouldn't survive. And the time will be shortened. They're going to be overwhelmed. Those Jewish people are going to be slaughtered and sought for. And the world's number one arch enemy. And there's going to be a price on each of them. Listen, Adolf Hitler, Hitler is going to be a baby, a pussycat, compared to what the Antichrist is going to do. We read in Revelation that there'll be the heads of those, uh, the, the ones that have been beheaded for the word of God. Selah. I told you, that's a musical rest, and that shows within a couple of verses of that Selah, it's a second advent passage. Thou God holdest my eye waking. Well, I thought they said it's Santa Claus that sees you when you're sleeping or you're awake. It ain't Santa Claus. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. God saw you wake up this morning. Even the pitch blackness of your bedroom. 
God saw those eyeballs. I see those eyes. You're open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. Remember, he said, My sword runs in the night, and I got some sleep, and I'm waking up. I'm still in trouble. I can't speak, and I've been there. Peter cried out, Lord, save me when he's sinking. I've woken up in the middle of the night just saying, Lord, help. And not even Lord, help. Help. There's nothing else I know what to say because I don't know. Help. Help, Lord, if I want two words. I have considered the days of old. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. So I have looked at what God has already done for me. In the years of ancient time, I have looked back in Jewish history, as I have said, and I've seen what God has done for the nation of Israel. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. And I'm going to assume that the Jews in tribulation are going to be like, man, this is worse than Egypt. And the Lord came through and got us out of Egypt. The Lord is going to come through. He's going to get us out of this mess. Egypt, Exodus, and all that is all going to happen again. I call to remembrance. Don't forget God. My song in the night. There are times when he couldn't sleep or he's on duty or whatever. He used to sing at night instead of being pain. I used to work third shift and when I was, I'd be singing, enjoying, listening to, uh, you know, Bible preaching and listening to lessons in the Bible and preaching when I work uh, third shift. I commune with my own heart. He's talking to himself. He sought God. He's saying, Lord, where have I sinned? I do that. And I, I, I advise people all the time to do that. If you can't sleep, house is quiet, no one's around, say, Lord God, I'm your son. I know I am. I'm saved. What sins are interrupting you and I from perfect fellowship? And many people are afraid to, to ask God that because they're afraid that God's going to mention that most favorite sin I did. I'll tell you the truth. I, I tell the Lord that all the time. I say, Lord God, what's... I can't even get the words out of my mouth. And, and what the Lord says, impatience. Yeah, Lord, I know. Lord, what else? <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not trying to buy it. I just, what else? Is, and you know what? The Lord will show you. And people won't do that because God's going to show me what I, you know, what my sin I love. Maybe. But from a straight heart, James says, let, let, if a man lacks wisdom, let him la ask of God, not wavering. God, w what sins are, are troubling you? And then don't waver. Well, you know, that's not really a sin. Well, I, I can't help. It. No, you don't do that. Say, Lord God, well, how can I? First of all, first of all I need to confess them sins. And I need to battle those sins. I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. That's when you get off to God alone. No one else. No one bother you. No television set. No children running around. No destruction. No the night. And it's usually quiet. And say, Lord, what's wrong? What's wrong with me? And you'll find that you'll have a greater fellowship with God. Will the Lord cast off forever? And that's going to be the question in the tribulation period. Though the Bible says seven years. Three and a half years of great tribulation. But you're not going to be counting the days when all that mess is running around. When you got this beast running around with a scorpion tail and he strikes you and you get pain, I think, in three or six months. And you can't find death. And you can't find relief. You're not going to take time to mark your calendar. Oh, okay, we got... We got five and a half more months of this. No, you, 
You're going to be too busy in pain. You're going to cry out to God, God, when is this going to be over? And that's not like a Christian life either. I don't know. When is, when is the Christian life going to be over? When's, I don't know when the rapture is going to happen. But one thing for the tribulation period, you know it's seven years. You know it's going to be three and a half years, then it's going to be hell on earth, and then after that it's going to be another three and a half years. You know it. That's what the Bible says. That's the prophecy and reliance of God. Today in the church age, well, you may be suffering till you die and not go up in the rapture. How long? Cats off forever. And will be favorable, favorable no more. God, I thought we were the apple of your eye. I thought we were the nation that you looked upon. Isn't this the land that is yours and you gave it to us? Yeah, but you sinned. You disobeyed. You crucified my son. And I'm chastising you. What child is being chastised by his father? Oh, dad just loves me very much. Oh, dad, yeah, I really need this. How long are you going to use that rod, dad? Come on. Ain't it done yet? Don't you love me, Dad? Yeah, I love you enough. I ain't going to give you a full. You mean I ain't going to give a full? Listen, it does hurt me more than it hurts you. And I stopped correction, chastisement, because <laughs> the tears. I love you. Remember the times when you were? I remember the times my mom would use the yardstick I'm out behind. I didn't think it was ever going to end. I, I break that yardstick. Across my butt, Mama pull another one out. Like, oh, thought it was done. But she loved me. God loves Israel. God loves the Christians that He chastises us. We may how long, oh Lord? Is His mercy clean, gone forever? And that, that's going to be. This is the attitude of the tribulation period. And his mercy is there. He sends out 144,000 to get right. He sends in Moses and Elijah, and that caused problems. But hey, I sent you two Jewish men that you know and that you love. I sent them to you. They give you more problems, but still, are they not the foundations of the Jewish faith? Does his promise fail forevermore? Now, when you're talking about the tribulation period, and you're talking about the prophecy that at the end of the seven years, Jesus Christ is coming on a white horse with the church behind him, and he's got the sword coming out of his mouth, he's got the fire coming out of his, his eyes, and he's the king of the king and the lord of lords. You better believe it. The seven-year period, when the lights go out, the sun, the moon, the natural, and the, and the unnatural, the man-made life, when that all goes out, Better believe God's coming. Because if God fulfilled all the prophecies of the Messiah in the first advent, he's going to fulfill all the prophecies of the second advent. And when the church goes before the tribulation period, as has been prophesied, rest assured that that tribulation period is not going to be seven and a half years and two months. No, 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 no. It's going to be seven years. And there may be some people calculating. Need to be able to calculate. As far as I know, you know, we think Tel a preacher is a city that God has prepared for in Revelation 12. I've heard that there have been missionaries going over there and they hid Bibles in that city. And when they pick up that Bible, and by chance come to Revelation by the Spirit of God, hey, and they look at Daniel and they look at the... Pro Isaac. Yeah, what, what? How many years have this thing been going on since, you know, those Christians, that, well, it's been about five, six years. Well, yay, this, this New Testament says, and our Old Testament says, seven years, we must be coming to the end. And it says that this Jesus is going to come. Well, guess who's going to come? Jesus. 
They're not going to say crucify him that time when he comes. They're going to say come save us. That's what your name is. Jehovah save. Save us. Glory to God. Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercy? Selah. For a little period. To the ignorant nation has passed, the Bible says. It is the anger of God. It is the time of great Jacob's trouble. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. It is the time of tribulation. It is the wrath of God. The chastisement upon the nation of Israel, not to destroy them. The devil will do that. But to help them to realize that when Jesus Christ comes at the second advent, those Jews are going to be ready to love him, hug him, kiss him. It's going to remind them of the Old Testament. As, as Joshua brought them into the promised land, Jesus is going to bring them in the same way. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of thy right hand. Of the Most High. Remember I taught you what that right hand of the Most High is? Who is seated at the right hand of the Father today? Who was seated at the right hand of the Father before he was born in Bethlehem? That right hand is Jesus Christ. I remember the years of that right hand. Maybe Israel is going to re recall somehow. Man, that man, Jesus. Because they're going to realize the Antichrist, who he is. And Jesus said, he's going to come in his own name and, and you're going to receive him, but my name you won't. There's going to be something about that Antichrist is going to bring them to the real Christ. And maybe they're going to get those scriptures. They're going to open up those scriptures, including the New Testament. And they're going to match it with the Old Testament and say, yeah, that is the Messiah. And the scriptures foretell he's coming. Because by time, the tribulation period, even the missing points of the Old Testament where the church is, that they could not see, the valley of the church we call, they're going to see that, wow, whoa, that was that period of time that those dirty dogs came to us preaching that Messiah. That is him. That right hand. I will remember. Look at all the remembering. Jacob's trouble is going to be a remembrance. Ooh, I remember how bad we were. I remember how we... Yeah, it says right here we're going to have a time. No king and no temple and how foolish were we? How foolish were we to sit down at pass that Passover meal in our home and city, wherever part of the world we were? And the Bible says not a bone of him was broken, and we had a broken piece of lamb on the table. We did not go to Jerusalem. We could not obey the law. And while that those Christians were here. We had no morning sacrifice. We had no night sacrifice. As we have here in this period. And then three and a half years. They're going to go to temple. And the veil is going to be released. And there is Satan sitting in the mercy seat. Saying hi guys. I want Jewish blood. And me going to drink some Jewish blood. Do not the Catholics believe. And they'll tell you. That they drink and eat. A body of a Jewish man? Have you not read Revelation 12? He sat there to seek to devour that child. That Jewish child. Catholics eat a Jewish body. And drink a Jewish blood. By their beliefs. And by their catechism. And by the, the, the traditions of their church. If it is. And it's not. But they claim to eat a Jewish body and blood. The Antichrist is going to fulfill that. Remember, remember what remember what your rabbi told you about 
the stories of Moses and, and Elijah and Exodus. Remember that? Is not the water turning to blood? Is not death hanging around in the tribulation period? Has not Elijah come and, and say, hey, no rain? Remember the Old Testament. Remember what your rabbis taught you. Because it's happening again. And just to be sure, God's going to send Moses and Elijah. You know, this, this feels like our Old Testament scripture. Well, who's that over there? Moses and Elijah. Well, that'd be, that's, our, that's our Hebrew script, scripture. And they're actually doing what they've done in the books written about them. Where Jews require a sign. That's why Moses and Elijah show up. They verify their life, their ministry, and what's going on in the tribulation period. Book of Exodus. And guess what? Moses showing up. They're going to be redeemed out of the world. The Antichrist. Like they were redeemed out of Egypt. I remember the works of the Lord. All through the Old Testament. Surely I remember the, thy works of old. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Keep going. Keep going. All the books that were going. Always the Psalms. Many of it's going to happen again. And God, the faithful to the children of Israel, the book of Judges. And help us when we sin against the Lord God, help us. Okay, I'll take care of it. And then they go back into sin. They call upon God and God relieves them again and sends them another judge. It's going to be 144,000 type of judges running around. I will meditate, think, really put into thought also of all thy work. Again, throughout the whole Old Testament, everything that God has done to the nation of Israel. That's why it's recorded. And like I said, it, it, I have heard that there are Bibles hidden so featured. And if that is true and that's the case, they're going to run to that city and they're going to find these Bibles. They're going to be revealed. And they're going to pick them up. They're going to have services. And the, the rabbi is going to get up and say, I don't know how they say it in Hebrew, but Exodus. Second book of Moses. Oh, yay. Yeah, that just happened. Yo, rabbi, master. Yeah. Is not the water turning to blood right now? Yeah. Well, that's what we just did, read about in Exodus. Moses. Yeah, there's a man over there being like Moses. Sir, I heard that he said he is Moses. Exodus will play out again for the Jewish people. And talk of, of thy doings. And the rabbi is going to, well, listen, if he took care of the Israelites during that time, I know it seems impossible. I know it seems hard. And maybe it's a time of great tribulation. Uh, the, the scripture says the time of Jacob, but God is going to redeem us. He said, he'll give us a new heart. He'll take remember our sins no more. There is coming a day that God is going to redeem us by a Messiah. And he awfully sounds like that Jesus that we hated. Something about our scripture. It seems to point to that Jesus, that, 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 that Gentile. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thy way. Jesus said, I am the way. No access to the Father, but by Jesus. Oh God is in the sanctuary. Well, that's the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, when Asaph is writing, there, we read, they were bringing the ark into the tabernacle. David said one day, Lord, I live in cedar, you live in curtains. The tribulation period, that temple's there. But God ain't there. The devil is. In the millennium, the temple's there, Ezekiel said. And guess who's there? The king of kings, the lord of lords. Pilate said, this is the king of the Jews. And the Jews then won't say, well, right that he said he, no, they're gonna, he is the king. With David under him. Who is so great a God as our God? None. After they had the small G.O.D. running around who's Satan incarnate. That's a small G.O.D. That ain't God, capital G.O.D. Which is Jesus Christ. 
Go tell the Jehovah Witnesses. You know, when, when Jesus Christ comes at the second advent, you know he's going to be the answer of all answers for those Jewish people? He's going to be the answer. He's going to be the strength. He's going to be the conqueror. He's going to be the relief. He's going to be the helper. He's going to be the everything to those Jewish people. Thou art the God that doeth wonders. Yes. All through the scriptures. Even the life of Jesus Christ himself. Miracles and wonders. Thou God has declared thy strength among the people. All through the scriptures. Thou has thy arm redeemed thy people. Coming out of Egypt. Coming out of the great tribulation period. You don't have Pharaoh chasing them. You have the Antichrist chasing them. Thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. And I read people, they'll, all right, you can spiritualize the church here, but there's no spiritualizing here. It is the children of Jacob, the children of Joseph, Jacob's trouble, Israel, Jewish, Hebrew, sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, however you want to put it. They are God's people. And if God is going to chastise his people because they've done wrong, you better believe God is going to chastise England, America, China, Japan, Russia, Africa, Asia, South America, and all the island nations for their wrong. And if God does not chastise the world for their wrong and their sin, and he chastises the Jews for their sin, God would have to apologize to Israel, to Judah, to the Jews in the tribulation period, to Sodom and Gomorrah, to, to Babylon, to Egypt, and God need not apologize. Rest assured, America, England, and all the nations will get what they deserve from God. Nothing more and nothing less. Israel's going to get what they deserve. They said, let his blood be upon us. And boy, did they say a mouthful. And when the Antichrist pours out the blood, when Adolf Hitler poured out the blood of the Jewish people, God's blood, Acts 20, 26. The water saw thee, Oh God, the waters saw thee. They were afraid. Are you ready for the Bible context on that one? How could that be tribulation period? Revelation 17. Ooh, you're going to Revelation. I like Revelation. You won't like it if, you, if you're lost and the, and the rapture happens today or tomorrow. You won't like it. If you're lost, you won't like it. Any age. Revelation 17. we got two verses here. All right, 17 verse 1. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show you thee the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many waters. Remember Psalms? The waters say to thee, O God, the waters saw thee and were afraid. There's the waters. 17, 15. And he, the angel, said to me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, nice language, angel, <laughs> are people, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Go back to Psalms. There it is. The waters, the nations, the people, the multitudes, saw thee, O God. Da, 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 da. I don't know if you're going to what kind of trumpet it is when Jesus comes. And the waters saw thee, Jesus coming, God. Oh God, who's coming? Jesus. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses, shut up. There it is. Revelation 19. Jesus is coming. King of kings, Lord of lords. The word incarnate is coming. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh God, we saw thee. You're going to see Jesus coming. That's God. You're going to see God coming. That's Jesus. There it is. 
Tell the Jehovah Witness to read his Bible, study his Bible, so he don't need to be ashamed. He's going to be made ashamed. And they were afraid. And the Bible says that when Jesus comes, they're going to take all their little idols, knick-knack, paddywhack, they're going to throw them to the holes. They're going to throw them to the caves and the bats and all that. And let us not be caught with the Son of Man coming. Let us not be caught with our idols and images. Fear. Scripture. It's all going to be played out. Those Jews in the tribulation period, as they get closer and closer and closer to the second advent, they're going to be, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, scripture says something about this. See, they were ignorant, Paul would say, the first coming of Jesus Christ. Because they didn't want to believe the scripture. They didn't want to do right. They wanted Jesus to come and kick Rome's butt, get Rome out of there, and they could sit in their land and party and do whatever they want, and eat and drink and be merry. That's not in the scripture. But they didn't see the suffering Messiah, Isaiah 53. Oh, they're going to see the Messiah coming as a lion in the tribe of Judah. Their relief, their redeemer cometh. The depths also were troubled. Troubled. Yeah, here he comes. Here comes God. I got the mark. Oh, I can't get it off me. Oh, I can't get it off me. The clouds. What do you think clouds are referenced to? Jesus. Acts chapter 1, all through the scriptures, those clouds. The cloud that led Israel through the wilderness, cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night. This is all second advent by the prophet Asaph, and that was First Chronicles 16 or 25. That was First Chronicles 25, 1, 2, and 3. The prophet. Where scholars I've read, oh, there may be another Asaph. Yeah, you may have another Bible too. Only by the King James 1611 Bible. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, my word shall never pass away. I think we're going to have a family of the King James. King James and the Geneva Bible, and all the way down to the actual words. Maybe the originals. Look when we get to heaven, we, we, we see the Ten Commandments, we're looking at it and like, God, the Ten Commandments look like they were broken. Yeah, they were. Wow, he's got the originals. You see a pile of ashes there put together. God, what's this one? This is the one that they burnt with a pen knife in Jeremiah's time. Ooh. I don't know, just throwing that out there. I was picking on scholars and going even further. I like to kick. And I'm kicking scholars. The clouds poured out water. Tribulation period. The water turns to blood. Elijah, I almost said Isaiah. Elijah said, no rain, Lord. Top that, Moses. When it rain, any rain and water we have, God? Yeah, make it blood. Whoa, Moses. Doesn't it say that they're going to do these things at their will? All right, your turn, Elijah. Okay, let's see, what can I do? And when Jesus Christ comes... Is it not something about that latter and early rain? That early and latter rain will come in the nation of Israel, in the land of Israel, when Jesus comes and the curse is removed and there's tomatoes everywhere. I know I don't see tomatoes in the Bible, but I love tomatoes. God's going to give me a city of tomatoes and salt and pepper and Italian dressing. Well, maybe not Italian dressing. But figs and grapes and... The vengeance is overflowing, and the lion's going to eat uh, straw like the, like the lamb. And the lion and the lamb going to dwell together in a little chair. The sky sent out a sound. Da -da -da -da. Here he comes. Ready or not, thy, thy, God's arrows also went abroad. <laughs> getting, the, getting the goat nation. The goat nations that rejected Israel, that hated Israel, that hated God, and loved the Antichrist. The voice of thy thunder was in heaven. In the heaven. Here comes Jesus. Da -da 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 -da. The lightnings lighten the world. There's no there's no light. It is pure darkness. The sun has turned off. The moon has gone quiet. The moon gets the light from the sun. So there's none. The stars are darkened. 
and there's no natural and there is no man-made light and here comes this light a train at the end of the tunnel here it comes it's coming it's coming it's coming it's a man on a horse what is his name revelation 19. i know what his name is his name is redeemer lord god savior jesus israel's gonna say there is just jesus jehovah saves us amen Emmanuel, we're going to dwell with him in the land. Glory to God. What, Rabbi? It's over there in Luke? Oh, we don't read that. Oh, we're going to read it? Okay. Everybody here, open your Bibles to Luke. Hey, wait, this is talking about the temple. There's a man in the temple burning incense with prayer. Hey, that's us in the Old Testament. Wait, wait, wait a minute, this Mary, she, 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 she's a virgin, and she's going to give birth? Hey, that, 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 that's in Isaiah. Isaiah spoke about that, because they don't read the New Testament. I witnessed that many Jews, they said, we don't read that, we don't even look at that. But we're going to look at it at the end of tribulation. And they're going to see Jesus, who he is. The voice of thunder, I love thunder, in the heaven. And lightning, lighten the world. The earth trembled and shook. Earthquake. Earthquake. Thy way. Who's the way? Who's thy way? Who's God's way? Jesus said, I'm the way. Is in the sea. And thy path in the great water. Have you not read Genesis chapter 1? The deep, the waters. The earth was in and out of the waters. It's the solar system. Where astronauts go they have spaceships and they're gonna have a, a nautical officer and they got space stations and they gotta have oxygen tanks to survive it's all nautical and thy footsteps are not known I don't know about that man just when he comes but he's not coming with footsteps he's coming with horse steps if you want uh, whatever you call that. Thou leadest thy people, Israel. Don't you dare say that's a church. Don't you dare say that's America. He leadeth thy people. What does it say down here? Verse 15, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. He leadeth thy people like a flock. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know who I am. I'm not quoting that. Right. And to show you that it's the Old Testament coming back that led them by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses said to be a prophet like unto me. You know how they're going to recognize Jesus? He's just like Moses. And we have, a, what's that hymn? Uh, just like Jesus' is great love. I, I forget how that goes. The Jews are going to have a song at the end of the tribulation. Just like Moses, he's coming to redeem me. There he is. Asaph, the man that has been appointed by King David, when the when the ark is in curtains, who has been put by David to have a musical choir of instruments and perfection of songs to glorify God at the temple, this man here in charge of all that with two others. He man, and I forgot the other, Jeduthun. This man also prophesies. And he prophesies in the last three songs in great detail that you can't miss it. And if they studied songs in the tribulation period, they are not going to miss. Unless they totally, utterly reject God. And they'll be damned. So, read your whole Bible. Because both the Old, the Gospel, and the New Testaments all together. There are great treasures. And okay, I read the New Testament. Or I read my daily psalm. You gotta read it all. Because did we not read Exodus in chapter 77? Are we not reading about the tribulation coming again? And when you read Exodus, you're going through Psalm 77. Like, whoa, 
I read that somewhere back here, somewhere. And then when you get to Revelation, you get to to the prophecies of the of Daniel and all that. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. That sounds like Exodus. And then I read in Psalms something sound like Exodus. And when I read Jesus, it sounds like Exodus. Because the nation of Israel is going to have a second Exodus. And we Christians are going to witness it from heaven. And to help Jesus, I don't know what kind of help, we're going to just be behind them all the way. We're going to help Jesus or be part of Jesus when he comes and gathers them out under a great feast of the Jews. Because here comes the Passover. Here is the lamb of the Passover. They're not taking the blood of the Passover over the, the doorpost and the lentils. This is the Passover land that Paul said, he is our Passover. They are taking the Passover and the Passover is bringing them in. Glory to God. Why do I believe the Bible? One extraordinary fact. God is a prophecy God and it all comes to the team. Thank you very much. Hope you have a good good day or good night wherever you are. Share these videos, like these videos, get these out in the glory of God. Uh, we won't be here tomorrow night. This is Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night is our church night, but we'll be back, Lord willing, Psalm 78, Thursday night. Thursday afternoon sometime, or sometimes Friday, we'll be returning to our study about evil. And have a good night. Thank you for listening.